Hey guys, what's up and how's it going? So I wanted to make this video for a while. I'm super, super excited that The Witcher on the Netflix series finally dropped and I just really need to kind of organize my thoughts and get through what I wanted to say with it. So first of all, in the season, what they're covering is the two books, The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny, if I'm recalling that correctly. So whenever we're going over the content of this video and whenever we're talking about the witcher i'm following along the books i've read so from what i can understand as someone who read the books it's not really complicated for myself to follow along but i kind of noticed whenever i was watching it my girlfriend does have kind of a problem at times she'll end up asking me or we'll have to stop the episode and i have to explain stuff and why things are going on Fuck. That being said, it is still a good story. She had moments where she cried, just like whenever I was talking about the Stranger Things. There were still emotional pull things that I really did enjoy throughout the story. Also, whenever you look online and see the reviews, the Rotten Tomato reviews are not depicting at all what the fans actually like. So Rotten Tomatoes right now has a 65% rating for critics, and then it also has an 8.5 out of 10 on IMBD, but it has a 96%. A 96% on google reviews which is personal reviews from fans and what they actually like so what that told to me is the critics are getting a complete disconnect this isn't made to be in a critically acclaimed thing this is made f a love letter to the fans but this also is a message kind of to the critics i feel like it's they're getting more and more disconnected from the audiences that actually care spreading the tales of Geralt of rivia the the butcher of blaviken Come here. Yeah. And also, as a fantasy lover and someone that just has followed the genre since since I can first remember, I started watching Lord of the Rings. My brother got me into the Harry Potter series when I was young. I mean, stories since I've been a kid have been around before I was born. And it's just, I've, I've loved fantasy forever. And I feel like the media really gives it a lot of crap because it's just, I, I don't know why. The media just doesn't like it for some reason, and a lot of literary circles don't like it, which I really don't understand. It's very rich storytelling, its atmosphere is amazing, and it has deep storylines. So the producer of the show, Lauren Schmidt, is very dedicated, and so is Henry Cavill, and Henry Cavill has a bunch of awesome interviews where he talks about how passionate of a fan he is of The Witcher. You sought this rollout. You're the one who... Absolutely. Who yeah. Why, why? I mean, you just love the games, love I, the books? I love the love... games. Mm -hmm. The games are, especially Witcher 3, super immersive. And the producer... So Lauren Schmidt, she is very dedicated to the show. She has said she wants to run this for seasons, and she seems very dedicated to the story. The adaptations she's taking is directly from the books, and although they're long episodes, they actually are cutting a bit out here and there. In The Last Wish, there are a few stories. There's a few stories with the priestess and everything that they don't include, but I don't think it's necessary. I think she's doing a very, very well job at explaining the story and the major plot points that need to be explained. There's like a fuzzy in the air and I hate it. It's distracting the crap out of me. <laughs> Anyways, so Lauren, Lauren Schmidt is doing a very good job from adapting it directly from the source material. The people from the games will kind of be confused, but kind of won't at the same time. The games in the book kind of have this real relationship. The games happened after the events of all the stories, and the story is obviously told before. So if you're a Witcher player from The Witcher 1, 2, or 3, most of you I'm imagining do The Witcher 3. So what you should expect from the story is she's gonna be adapting directly from the source material. She's a fan, just like Henry Cavill. I don't believe it'll fall into what I like to call the Game of Thrones syndrome. I don't wanna harp on too much because I know especially here on YouTube, a bunch of people that have been reviewing The Witcher or trying to compare it to Game of Thrones and or, or Song of Ice and Fire. Understand me here, they're two completely different things. The, the magic system's completely different. The Witcher is more about destiny intertwined and how Geralt and Ciri and Yennefer are all kind of interacting with one another. And Game of Thrones is more about the families and the overarching story of the White Walkers that it's inevitably coming. Here's the key difference though. George did not finish the books. The books for The Witcher have been done since 2018. So the reason why I'm so excited for this series is I don't think it will fall into the same syndrome that a Game of Thrones or a Song of Ice and Fire fell into. It has all the source material there. There's no way they don't have something to go back to because that's whenever D&D kind of forgot everything in A Game of Thrones. And he kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet and Euron's forces. Also, heads up, 
if you were like my girlfriend or a bunch of my friends that are like, oh my god, the series was amazing, I finally get what you were talking about, because I was really into The Witcher in 2012, I ended up picking it up after I saw Andrew Joe's Witcher 2 review, which I'll probably put a link to his video down here. He's an awesome reviewer, if you haven't checked him out, you should definitely go check him out. He has a great review for those if you're interested in the game. He also does them spoiler free. So I checked it out, fell in love with the series, that's where I picked up the books, pre-order the Witcher 3 Collector's Edition for my PS4 and everything, and yeah, I just basically fell in love with the series, played it on my PS4, um, right now I'm replaying it on my computer, and I absolutely love the universe. That being said about the universe though, this is kind of a beware situation. What you should be aware of is there are major, major spoilers that happen in The Witcher 3, and you can also start with The Witcher 3. It may be tempting to go back, but trust me, you get an overall review of the entire story of what happened up to this point for The Witcher 3. But again, beware of major spoilers that are happening. There's certain things in storylines that are going to be translated later on. There's certain things... Ugh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make this the least spoiler way possible. Literally, after White Orchard in The Witcher 3, I just got through it and I was, I, I was on a specific storyline. And I didn't realize how much of a spoiler it really was. It's going to let you know what happens with Nilfgaard, with Sintra, with um, Ciri's parents. It's going to spoil everything if you follow it. So just beware. And it will also spoil how Geralt's legend kind of built up. They did a really great job with Jaskier slash Dandelion. Into your witcher, oh valley of plenty, whoa. But yeah, anyways, that's kind of my first part of the series. I want to do a bunch of more videos like this, and I really want to dive deep into this universe because, again, I'm a super, super mega fan for this. And yeah, so until next time, guys, see you.